This example of the conservation of momentum for a finite control volume adds a little bit more complexity. So forgive my terrible drawing skills. This is supposed to be a faucet. So there's this nozzle and it's screwed onto a pipe. This is supposed to be like pipe threads. Yeah, <laughs> I know. We're given a lot of information here, so let me just summarize it for you. The flow comes in in a uniform velocity profile. It goes through this nozzled cone section and comes out in a skinnier jet. That's what's interesting. Gravity points down and we're given a bunch of information about the geometry and flow rate and things like that. And what we're interested in is finding the force that the water is exerting on this nozzle to see how much we need to push up on it to stop it from getting blasted off. There's a key word in this problem statement that tells us where we should start. And that's this one right here. When you see the word force, the thing that should come running to your mind is to conserve momentum. I'll give you a little preview though. This problem is going to be a challenge because we won't have enough information. And so when we do the conservation momentum, we're going to find unknowns and we'll have to use other principles to close it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on this little region here where something's happening to the fluid. So the first step in applying these things really is to define the system. Define your system. And so we want to, you know, look at a region of this flow in more detail. So let's, let's say we're going to look at just the section in the converging part of the nozzle, which looks something like this. And then I suppose it's revolved because it's, it's a flow path. And what we want to do is we want to think about the flow and the forces that we might be experiencing here. Well, the flow coming in was given to us as W1. It's going to be leaving at W2. Those flows need normal vectors. So let's go ahead and call this one n hat 1. And this normal vector here we can call n hat 2. Uh, bearing in mind that we're saying that the z direction is up and so k hat is our coordinate vector there. Inside this tank, there, in, inside this region, we've got some forces that we're going to need to account for because this is a momentum balance. Even though it's moving, the water in this region has a weight and so acting through the middle here is the weight, which is mg. And this is the weight of the water, just to be clear, of the water. Uh, but the other forces acting on this have to do with pressure. There's a pressure on the top. The water coming in has a pressure, and it's acting over area 1. And if there's a pressure there, then there must be a pressure at the bottom acting this way, which would be P2A2. And then there's the anchoring force. Remember, we're doing forces on the water. And so... I'm going to draw a force this way that we will call F anchor, but that is the force of the solid surfaces acting on the fluid pushing up on it. Okay, so now we can go ahead and conserve momentum. So we'll start by writing out the full form of the equation. I always start with the full form. d by dt, integral over the volume of v rho d volume plus integral over the area of v rho v dot n dA is equal to the sum of forces. Now, it was told to us that this is a steady problem. That kills this first term. And now what we need to do is expand this out. We've got two areas over which momentum is flowing. And so we can go ahead and write out integral over A1 of V1 row V1 dot N1 dA plus the integral over A2 2 of v2 row v2 dot 
N2 dA, and that has to be equal to the sum of the forces. All right, time to work out some coordinates here. V1 is the velocity coming into this thing. That has magnitude W1 that was given in the problem, and it's moving downward, which is the negative k hat direction. N1 is pointing straight up. That's the positive k hat direction. And so V1 dot N1 is equal to W1 times minus k hat dotted with k hat, which is just equal to W1. V2 is equal to W2 because it's pointing magnitude here and it's pointing downward. It's in the minus k hat direction. But N2 also points down, so N2 is equal to minus k hat, which means V2 dotted with N2 is equal to a minus W2 k hat, and that's being dotted with a minus k hat to give us just a positive W2. So let's sub that in. I'm going to go to a new page to make it a little easier for you to read. So let's uh, find the top here. Where'd it go? There it goes. All right. And so if we sub that in, we get the integral over A1 of V1. The whole vector goes in, unit vectors and all, W1 k hat, rho minus W1 dA plus integral over A2 minus W2 k hat row w2 once again we're just subbing in from the last step there da is equal to the sum of the forces now we were given in the problem statement that the flows were uniform in other words there's no velocity profiles over the area uniform and it is in compressible and that lets us pull some stuff outside of the integrals we can pull the w1 row w1 k hat out and we're just left with the integral over a1 of da minus and we can pull a bunch of stuff out here like w2 row w2 a2 and that k hat can all come out of the integral oh whoops I skipped a step w2 k hat integral over a2 dA, sorry about that, and that's equal to the sum of the forces. And so you can see here, these are just the areas now, and so we're left with W1 rho, W1, A1, K hat minus W2 rho, W2, A2, k hat, and that's equal to the sum of the forces acting on our fluid. Once again, we can notice that all of this business is just m dot 1. We can notice that this business here is m dot 2. And the conservation of mass can be applied real quick here by making those equal to 0. Mass. It's not saying that they're equal to zero, it's just they're equal to each other, it turns out, right? And so we can sub that in real quick as just W1 m dot times k hat minus W2 times m dot k hat equals sum of forces. One of the reasons that I'm being so meticulous here about these vectors is that it can be very confusing which direction the forces are pointed in. But if we go back to our diagram here, we can look for a minute. All the forces were in the up and down direction. We had the weight, which was mg. We had pressure acting on the top surface, and it was pushing downward, p1a1. Pressure on the bottom surface was pointing upward, p2a2. And then we had the anchor force, which we drew up.
So we can sub all that in real quick, and we're getting really close to the end here now. W1m dot minus, oof, this is getting sloppy. Sorry, gang. Hang on here. Let me just rewrite that real quick. W1 times m dot minus W2 times m dot, and that has to be equal to the anchor force minus P1A1 plus P2A2 minus MG. And the question here is, this is basically the solution now, if we know enough information to sub everything in. So if we go back and audit what we know, I invite you to pull the notes out and, and follow along with me. They gave us W1. M dot we can calculate quick enough, right? M dot we can calculate using row W1 A1. That's equal to M dot. So we can calculate that real quick and get it. Boom. W2 they gave us. No, they didn't either. They didn't give us W2. So that's question mark for now. We ought to figure out how we're going to get that one. The anchor force is what we're looking for, so that's okay that we don't know it. P1 was given. A1, well, that's just geometry. P2, we were not given. So we'll have to figure that one out. A2, again, geometry. And Mg, well, we know G and the mass here that's in there we could get from row V. We've got to find the volume of a weird shape, but that's what the web is for. Go look up what that thing is. So I'm going to call that a known. Just more geometry. Uh, now, P2. We can go ahead and call that atmospheric. Right? It's left the nozzle, and so, and so we can call it zero and work in gauge pressures and not worry about it. So now we're good there. And that just leaves W2. And so the challenge here is that we're actually short science at this point. We have to use science to get this. And we can find W2 uh, using conservation of mass. So let's do that real quick. A lot of times you're going to have to break out a second rule to find everything you need. But we know we can write this, which means row 1, W1, and A1 have to equal row 2, W2, and A2. And it's incompressible, so these cancel. We can get the geometry. And we know this from the problem statement, so that will give us W2. And now we can solve it in. So this was the mass conservation. A little side note here to wrap up. If we'd already used mass conservation, it wouldn't add any new information, and this wouldn't work for us, actually. Uh, but there's still another option out there. You could try Bernoulli. Right? P1 over rho plus W1 squared over 2 has to equal P2 over rho plus W2 squared over 2. And so we said that P2 was 0. P1 and W1 were given. And so you could solve this for W2 as well. So you've got two different options here. Uh, and you'll have to do this from time to time. I always recommend starting with the thing that answers the question. We're after forces. Forces come from momentum. So start with momentum. At the end, do the audit of what it is you know and don't know, and work from there using the other principles, such as mass conservation or Bernoulli, to get what you need.